So thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is our case study. We, uh, the group is composed by myself, Elena, oh, sorry, Elena, Ali, Raymond, Cyril, Betuel, Americo, and Abdel Fattah. Okay. <laughs> It's difficult. Uh, we decided to uh, use a case study an hospital in a developing country. And uh, why we decided to do this? Because the hospital is an indoor environment that should be as clean as possible because there are, that could be immunocompromised patients. So the hypothesis that we wanted to test this is where? Is the hospital a source of exposure of pollutants? And uh, to compare the two cases, two sites, one rural and one urban, to see, to check if uh, to the same facility in the same country but in different areas can uh, actually uh, determine uh, a difference in the exposure. Someone else want to speak of my, my, so? All right, so the objectives were to measure uh, different types of pollutants, whether indoor or outdoor, uh, the hospital that is, we, as Mauricio said, we're gonna have two hospitals, one uh, in rural and one in urban. Uh, the the pollutants would be uh, PR, heavy PM, heavy metals, volatile organic compounds, uh, and uh, other gases concentration, and as well, uh, microbiological contaminants. I wonder why. <laughs> uh, so uh, there will be also chemical analysis of the water uh, contaminants. Uh, the population uh, would be the hospital workers and the patients, and the patients would be classified into three categories. Uh, the categories uh, that are patients staying in the hospital for one to three days, or from three days to one week, or more than one week. And uh, we selected the population to be patients aged more than uh, 30. just split me and uh, so the analytical techniques to to measure the contamination first of all active sampling and then classical chemical characterization for the endpoints so we will thought about putting in a representative points uh, a sampler that sample particles pn10 pn2.5 so we will have the filters to make the characterization uh, we will take a sample of water uh, once in a day to make the characterization of metals and of bacteria in water. Should be sanitized, but better to check. And then we will make a um, scrub from the swabbing from the surface to check if the surface of the hospital can have bacteria or release other uh, other uh, contaminants. Uh, we also thought to recover outdoor data from the local, if it's available, air quality network to check if indoor air is, however, better than outdoor. And of course, the patient's data from the hospital record and again, the data of water quality from local authority. So uh, for the health outcomes, uh, 
uh, or health uh, assessments of uh, health impact, we, uh, we have to take the uh, data of uh, the frequent w frequency of infections due to indoor uh, pollutants, which means uh, uh, nosocomial inf uh, respiratory infections acquired in the hospital during their patient's stay, the frequency of respiratory symptoms, and the frequency of onsets of allergy symptoms. Uh, the expected results, uh, we, uh, we're gonna see the differences in the exposure level and health outcomes between uh, the rural and the orb urban uh, environment. And the indoor aerosols concentration may be important, uh, more important than the outdoor ones. And the compounds of indoor aerosols uh, are more complex. Recommendations? Yeah. Uh, if the results were, uh, were going to be positive, uh, the recommendation we thought were if outdoor pollution is affecting indoor, uh, check ventilation and climatization. I mean, ventilation and climatization should provide clean air to the hospital. If is this not the, the case, please check it. Uh, if urban hospital is more polluted than rural, uh, review the hospital guidelines. Maybe hygiene ventilation is different. Maybe being in a really crowded urban area, uh, it's more likely that the windows are always open, that the doors for entering the hospital are always open, so there is a huge exchange of pollution, or maybe the, the um, uh, rules in, within the hospital are not so strict as they should be. And if hospital contaminates outside, we also thought maybe uh, from some specific gases there is leakage, so it's important to check if you have also a sort of side effects. It means the hospital is contaminating outside just to check leaks and isolation of the hospital. And that's it. So, uh, comments from the audience? I have several, <laughs> but <laughs> first of all, thank you very much because in a very short time the protocol is really good one. Uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, concern about the outcomes because you should be in this, in, in a studio like that, you have to be sure that the infections or the other as, uh, respiratory defects are because of the indoor pollution. So if you decided to have an hospital-based hospital, -based hospital bet the good idea is to choose a word which is not connected with the respiratory <laughs> problems. So maybe <laughs> trauma or other centers, because maybe people with the respiratory disease are in the hospital. Or if you cannot do that, uh, a very good question in order to assess the health status of the patients at the beginning of the stay in the hospital, because we want to say that it, they, 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 this is, as I say, worsening because of the indoor air quality. It's a long, I mean, uh, okay. just... Probably uh, the variable would be the time of stay. So if the patient had the onset of the symptom in, uh, in a couple of hours, it's really not from the hospital. And the uh, nature of the uh, germ he acquired and its level of resistance to antibiotic is a very good indicator as well if it is a hospital acquired infection or not. It's, Sorry. Uh, it's everything that can be judged against the severity of disease at the beginning of the entering the hospital. No, the idea is that from acquiring the data from the hospital, if the patients start to have uh, respiratory symptoms, being already in the hospital, so yeah, it can be related to their the, the reason of the yeah, 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 the yeah, reason yeah, of, of the yes, why yes, they are yeah, in the yeah, hospital. Okay, okay. But that's that's, that's yeah, yeah. so. Perfect. Thank you. We have no oh, extra time. Question. Oh, maybe one. Okay, short. Good morning, and it, it was really nice. But every time I give example from India, that uh, maybe not good for me or my country. But that is important to know for all. Uh, my university has a medical uh, college and hospital as well. And uh, many a times, many a times, uh, we start vomiting on the street, outdoor, from, uh, say, smell of a say, dead body rotting inside. So 
so you can uh, estimate the what about the level of indoor uh, pollution about uh, the infection so how to separate uh, this kind of say um, <coughs> pollution and with say general environment indoor environment yes we forgot to say one thing about our sampling protocol we thought to sample for one week at least so to okay. divide weekdays and weekend days because during weekend days we expect to have more visitors so we can also check if the presence of a lot of persons uh, actually bring the clouds, their clouds into the hospital, so a more uh, relevant outdoor pollution due to visits, not to the, so, and sorry, as, we forgot it. Be, uh, much different because, uh, sorry, one second. Uh, because uh, in uh, our case, the weekends are closed, the hospitals are closed in weekend, so if you are sick on Sunday, you will die. <laughs> as as Carla was saying, then it's clear. As Carla was saying, if if the patient is hospitalized for an abdominal surgery, for example, and uh, after three days he shows symptoms of respiratory disease, then this is definitely acquired in the hospital and not from the outside. Yeah. We have to go. We have to go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Allora, mettiamola loro che parlano subito. Esatto, Cassiano. Just need someone here for the camera and just for the mic. Someone can make a noise if they're the fight. Okay. Yes, the, yeah, so the interfight, yeah, exactly. It should be this one, but we, we have modified it. Is this one of these ones, uh, Zainab? Is it going from that or not? Just a small pause for <laughs> technical reasons. <laughs> oh, this was modified five minutes ago. Uh, this one was modified five minutes ago. Okay, uh, second.
متعكدة علي عندك ال عندك ال كلي كي <تصفيق> لا <تصفيق> Okay, the presentation is finished. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> okay, we're going to try to find it again. So. <coughs> okay, so, this time. Okay, this one. How to get to the next slide? Okay, fantastic. Sorry. <laughs> okay. We are so relating. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, our case study uh, uh, will be a primary school in Cairo, which is a mega city with high population numbers. Uh, we will try to uh, uh, assessment the health risk of indoor population. Our team, Ali, Zainab, Mustafa, Dia, Gamil, Mariam, Mohammed, and Sarah. <laughs> okay, <Wow. it's> fast. <laughs> Introduction as indoor uh, air quality has gained uh, greater attention in recent years, uh, which is concerned to uh, human health. Uh, as uh, we spend most of our daily time in uh, indoor, in home, hospital, school, work, etc. So indoor quality uh, affecting the, uh, the the human health. Also, it is affecting by outdoor air, including stairs, entryway, soil, and root dust, and entering the indoor environment, which contaminates the outdoor air pollutants and the fall is a major source of uh, indoor air pollution. In a recent case, it is important to consider the indoor air quality uh, inside a school where children with different ages and they spent uh, most of their uh, time in a school, um, which is a long period, I think. It started from mid of September. This is the case. We, uh, we specified this date because uh, in September, in uh, autumn, in Cairo, we have an uh, event uh, of burning uh, rice ash, which is uh, increasing the anthropogenic activities by burning ash, uh, uh, rice ash. And uh, up to the next June of the next year, to, uh, to put a possibility to compare uh, the extreme events of uh, air pollution in that area. Location, it is high traffic nuclear area in Cairo. Subject uh, is, uh, or the target uh, will be the student with age from 7 to 12 years. Uh, the study, I, uh, time of study we stated before, reasons because it affects the student with different ages and it is easier to count the number of students in a school. It's easy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. In Cairo only. Okay. <laughs> If we could uh, count the number of students, it will be easy to uh, find the exposure assessment. As there are uh, various uh, sources of air pollution, all pits, dust from the ground, the smoke from vehicles, laboratories, libraries, consumptables of food and water, which may affecting by outdoor pollution and the transferring to indoor pollution. Teacher smoking is available, I think. Tools of teaching. Maybe student also smoke. <laughs> it's a case in Cairo. Yeah, it is the wall of a school. Other one? Other one? 
Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, in Cairo. Cairo. Yeah. That's the what? The students is asking for clear, yeah. clean uh, environment. <laughs> hypothesis. Dr. Mustafa will present the hypothesis. The hypothesis of this presentation, of this study, is to study the indoor pollution, uh, is to find if the indoor pollution, air pollution is adversely affected with human health or no. Uh, the general obje objective of this study is uh, assessing the environmental health risk related to the indoor air pollution and uh, learning the ability through the IQ tests. Okay. We can start by uh, take sampling from uh, each class or mon monitoring of air quality inside the school. This uh, types of uh, expected pollutants, uh, BM 2.5, CO3, NOx, SO2, volatile organic uh, component. Evaluation, we will uh, an statistical analysis for this uh, pollutants with, uh, with uh, the period per day. Evaluation of temporal variability of monitoring pollutant test concentration. Estimation of the health impact of the evaluated pollutant using the concentration response function in uh, three shapes selected as uh, recommended by WHO. Three shapes, log-log, linear, log-linear. This uh, to estimate the morbidity may be caused due to exposure for this pollutant theoretically. But uh, my colleague can, ex uh, can evaluate this experimentally by taking uh, some blood uh, analysis of the bio, uh, bio, as you see. Testing is uh, of learning ability and IQ test. Come here. Okay. Uh, this is our expected result that the high level of the pollution uh, will have a correlation in increasing the number of cases of respiratory and cardiovascular diseases and also the infectious disease. And we assume that the food and the drink also contaminated by the, the pollutant that it will be consumed by the student while they are in the school. So we also uh, trying that the expected result that beside the health impact to the student, it also will impact the learning ability of the uh, student in that school. This is the controlling option we offer, maybe. Control the pollution. We should be filtered for the water and air, limiting the hours of the school, increasing green space around the building of the school, and uh, the students should put uh, masks during the dust storms and make uh, alarm general alarm, alarm system in Egypt for high pollution. Um, finish. <laughs> Nice presentation. You, you set out by saying that um, exposure to air pollution impacts academic performance, even though not directly. I think you mentioned that even the last speaker also said that. How are you going to measure the impact of the air pollution on academic performance? I think that we can do it by IQ test and. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, I think that uh, we can do it by IQ test and learning test, periodical learning test and IQ test so that uh, it can be changed because of the pollution. Just briefly on that point, uh, there is a, a study that was done all over Europe nearly, and uh, they used uh, two parameters that are uh, the school grades of the students uh, and the days of absence from school due, that might be due to uh, respiratory symptoms or disease or onset of allergy and asthma and so on. Any other? Uh, I have one uh, for your conclusion. Uh, remove, please, uh, limit the number of hours in school and put masks. Because the only <laughs> remediation should be put uh, a, a label, it's forbidden to smoke, especially the teacher, because it is an example for the students. And uh, the second one, clean the, the area. Don't, don't le left any messages say, uh, as it's dirty, let children stay less in that area because they have to go to school, they have to, to stay in a nice and, and safe environment. So clean the school and don't smoke when at school, especially the adults. I mean, teachers and parents, if they go to, you know. Um, I think smoking, uh is not allowed inside schools um, in the school, but in limited areas. It's, oh, no, it's, a, it's, no, it's it forbidden be. to smoke even, inside even, uh, schools yeah. in Egypt, or I think yeah. in any ways. Um, I, my country uh, make uh, mitigations control for air pollution. I think air pollution is a global problem. Um, we increase green space around schools, make uh, tree shelters to uh, protect schools from uh, any dust storms or pollutants from around. Uh, also, uh, lately we open two uh, renewable energy stations, uh, solar energy in South Egypt, and also another one, uh, wind uh, station, wind, so wind power station in Red Sea to uh, increase renewable energy, uh, which may be b reduce the emitted. Uh, you know that uh, Cairo, one of the world uh, mega cities, and uh, populated maybe by uh, one, uh, 10 to 20 million people. So. Uh, it is a big problem to solve, uh, a problem as a pollution of air. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, as we have half an hour, maybe I can instead have my short and then at the beginning after the coffee break, uh, we can have the last Just have another group. Yes. Okay, so okay, let's finish with the group. So please, the lady group. <coughs> that's, that's the next one. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we will present uh, our presentation. We were thinking to study also a case study about uh, inside school, what's happening there. We form a small but uh, <laughs> a modest group of girls. I am Catalina Marculez. Here is Zornica uh, and uh, Alia and Afra. Um, we will go further. 
Uh, I will introduce you in our consideration. We consider the indoor condition of some primary school, could be a generally primary school, for example, in Eastern U Europe, like Romania, Bulgaria, or maybe their country. We are looking at some risk factors, some sources could affect the health of children. Uh, we will think much of our children could be there, it's some risk uh, situation. Um, because the children, they breathe more air comparison with adults. They could often uh, breathe with mouth because of the effort. Uh, they are running and moving a lot. So uh, in this way, um, uh, they not allow to the respiratory system to act and to prevent the role of some disease, some flus or some other causes. Also, they are situated closer to the floor and they are prone to some risk factors, so many uh, dangers are accumulated there. We put uh, here the hypothesis, we think about what could be there. Uh, and uh, we also know some cases in our country, for example, uh, the water pipes for drinking water, it's made from lead. So will be a risk factor also. Some low respiratory infection can appear at some students coming into classes instead of they are uh, ill. So uh, uh, the people taking care of school, they use chlorine substance also in the water, in general uh, drinking water system in the city, or they use such substance chlorine for cleaning the floor. Uh, or the people could come uh, around with the shoes uh, dirty by dust and pollen also. We were thinking uh, could be some mold on the walls, doesn't take care much on the walls during the year. Uh, or we consider fire resistant substance used uh, on the chair and to the desk. And we also were thinking about dust from the curtains. So this is uh, our hypothesis. So we, con uh, we concluded to choose some of these and we are, uh, stopping at the, uh, we are stopping at these three main sources. I will invite our, uh, my colleagues to continue. From this uh, six hypothesis, we classify just three sources as we um, can say uh, top priority related to, to the. Uh, yes, okay. From this six hypothesis, uh, Katarina mentioned, we just uh, take three, for example, more high risk uh, sources. Uh, mainly the first one, they let come from the water by drink because we are known that uh, lead is very toxic uh, and also have accumulation uh, factors in the, in the blood. Um, the children may be affected by the lead sooner or, or, or late. The other um, thing is um, the low respiratory infections uh, uh, be, um, because we know that uh, the dispersion of diseases among children is become very soon especially in summer and in winter. Also, the third uh, more risk uh, sources is the chlorine has been used in the surface, even the disc or in the floor. Also, chlorine is mainly used as a disinfectant uh, uh, agent in, in, in water, but it, if it is exceeds certain limit, will, will the, its effect will be oppositely in the other way. So uh, the solution may be... How, how do you change it? Okay, thank you. Uh, what could be done? Uh, the control options uh, for lead uh, from drinking water pipes is to use, uh, use filtered water. You can, uh, the, the, let's say parents can collect money for the children to, to, to subside the school with uh, mineral water so they can use this water instead of uh, drinking water from the pipes. Uh, or if there is such a problem, all the pipes could be changed with uh, PVC pipes um, or filtered water. Uh, also for the respiratory infections, um, 
Um, for example, in Bulgaria, at the kindergartens, we have, uh, I call this face control, like a nurse stays at the door and don't allow uh, children to come if they have some uh, visible uh, symptoms of flu or other diseases, thus preventing other, uh, children to get sick. And this doesn't exist that much in, in school, so this is um, something that could be done. Um, also, during the epidemic periods, so you can use masks uh, and um, uh, very efficient method in Bulgaria, so to, to stop the school for, let's say, one, or one week or, or more. Uh, usually one week works, uh, so the epidemic is stopping at the school. Um, provide, of course, the hygienic conditions and uh, vaccinations uh, in the period of epidemics for Bulgaria. In particular, this is very, the very lowest percentage of, um, of uh, people who are vaccinating, but it could be done with some uh, programs for the school children because uh, they are much more in contact and in risk than other. Um, for chlorine substances, uh, for surface and floor cleaning, uh, we can uh, uh, change the chemicals with using uh, natural materials for cleaning or ecological materials for, for cleaning. Okay. Before proceeding the comments, I am thankful to ICTV for having me. Following are the comments, uh, upgrading the health conditions of children in the school, Propose it to the municipality to change the network of water pipes and propose to have control at the entrance of school in order to prevent epidemics and to use natural cleaning materials at the school. And it's the end. Thank you very much. So, uh, is there any question for us in the room? Yes. Well, okay, sorry. Uh, thank you for the uh, presentation. I saw somewhere you talked about the uh, epidemic. Is it epidemic or epidemic health or Episodic. I didn't understand well. Outbreaks. Outbreaks. I have my question then. So you're talking on the control to use natural products for the cleaning and so. How do we know natural is better? And is it really a control? How do we know a natural is better and? How do you know that using natural substances to clean is better? I just, just, uh, um, I, I think we need study like the one you proposed because it's useful to provide the decisors to data, quantification of the impact, how many children, how they are, and what is it related or not to the indoor exposure. Because, you know, uh, having wa uh, clean water is a right. <laughs> and uh, maybe if they found that the level of lead in the pipes can affect the quality of the water, that's really a, a serious problem in the public health. So a quantification of the impact, we, we need study like that. Even in the future, I will be always available if you want to discuss with me some protocols or something maybe quick, a cross-section analysis with cheap, with few resources and this for, for all of you. So please stay in touch. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, sure. thank you. Question? Sí. So now we switch to your presentation, yeah. Anna. Carla, sorry. Okay. So, um, some someone during the week asked me about re real experience. I mean, how actually a researcher can do or not in in this field. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, an area that we have uh, in Lazio 
Lazio is the region surrounding Rome. I'm, I'm from Rome. Oh, what happened? Um, and what we did to measure the exposure and the health status of people living in that area. Um, okay. Now we know it's a complex issue. A lot of aspects have to take into account. And this is the area. Uh, you can see Italy. And now we are here in Trieste, the red is Rome, and the blue is Civitavecchia. It's a coastal area, so we have uh, uh, a few of industrial uh, play, um, uh, farms, because we have uh, thermoelectric plants, very, very big one. Once uh, um, use, they use oil, now they use coal. Then we have uh, the coastal deposits for the oils. Then we have an arbor, and we talk briefly about the problem of ships' emissions in affecting the quality of air. And this is a coastal area, but we have mountains over here. So uh, people in the mountains mainly use biomass combustion during winter for civil eatings. And because of the of the of the harbor, uh, the harbor is now used mainly for sh um, cruise. You know, when you say a beautiful cruise in the Mediterranean area, they stop for two days in Civitavecchia because they want to bring tourists to see the Pope in Rome or the Colosseum. So these very big ships, four thousand people in, in each, stay in the in the harbor, and they, those ships ships have to provide electricity to the, uh, to the people living there, 4,000 people. So there are really little uh, industrial um, uh, point that stay in that area. So the quality of air is affected. And we can tell that because we did in the past a lot of epidemiological studies and all the studies show relation in the, without saying nothing about the exposure, we simply found high mortality and morbidity risk for lung cancer, methotelioma and respiratory disease. So we say, mm, maybe something is in the air, maybe something in the air affect the health status of people, both working, occupational exposure, because of of course, in this industry, in the harbor, people work every day, but also in the general population, including children. So we publish some paper, everybody knows, but data about individual exposure to pollutants from the different sources uh, at that moment were not available. So we, we said, what we can do? Can we start a program uh, in order to have dispersion modeling? or we can use bio, human biomonitoring. The pros and the contrasts of the two approaches we have discussed uh, for the, in the previous day of this course, human biomonitoring provide the through, is the gold standard, because if you find the tracer into the urine or the blood or other fluids of the body, and this uh, contaminant is exogenous, is not biological product, but the, but the human body, you can tell that something from external courses enter into the body and we saw it can be through the food chain, through the water, through the air, but also we can use the dispersion modeling techniques. In the dispersion modeling techniques you don't have to ask people, you don't have to measure people. It's something that people from the exposure side can do. You need the skill, the technology, the software and the data, the emission data and the knowledge about weather condition and orography or the area, but the compare, in comparison they are really much more cheaper, so maybe suitable, suitable in place where you don't have such a lot found for research. So we did the two. Because we ask, uh, as I told you, I work in a public health department, so it wasn't us, it wasn't me, but we asked it in our network, colleagues coming from the environmental agency to do the dispersion model. We had discussed a lot about that. What you need are the emissions, the orography, and uh, the uh, um, weather condition in that area. Remember, we are talking about sea, but then mount, sorry, then the mountains. So the air starting from the plants goes to the mountains and go back in, in a way. The other thing that maybe we, we haven't discussed, which is the proper tracer. 
because we know that we know that from an industry plants or from a combustion a miscellaneous of pollutants are going into the air it is quite impossible to follow each of them in the in a dispersion model so we decided to use particular matter for combustion coming both for industry harbor and the biomass burning which is reasonable and also but we know that there are other contaminants affecting the air but to have a map we decided to use particular matter pm10 and then we use nox no 2 particularly for the traffic and the, because in that area we also it's an urban area so we have um, tr uh, vehicular traffic coming from cars uh, trucks uh, pullman uh, whatever and the model that you use what is lagrangia models called spray because spray can follow the path of the particles but can take into account also the chemical reactions that the particles uh, has in in the atmosphere so at the end as you now know uh, the dispersion model provides you a concentration so an amount uh, that you can measure in microgram by cubic meter in a points in the area and as I told you the, 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 few, the few days ago, uh, the, our individual, the proxy for the individual exposure was the individual address where you live in, in the area. And those are the results of the dispersion modeling. The first one comes from the coal power plant. It's a very high chimney to 100 meters high, so I can tell that maybe the quality of air in Rome is influenced by that plant. So the people are very, very concerned about the coal power plant because they see every day the tower and they see the smoke, but I don't know if you can read or not. I invite you to read the value. We are talking about 0, 0.000 something. And uh, so the contribution of the emissions coming from the coal power plants are really low. We can say they are low under, under, the, under uh, the, the limit that the legislature say they have uh, proper filter systems. So le, because we have to, to take into account the perception of people and the environmental worries that they are suffering for, from. So we have, uh, in anyhow, we have uh, uh, described the impact by the, the maps. And, oh, sorry, and uh, I don't want to rush. The harbor, more local. Um, value maybe a little bit much higher, but extremely local comparing to the to so to, to go back. This is the chimney, the very high one. How you see how wide the dispersion modeling is. Here we have concentration related mainly in the zone very close to the harbor because the chimney coming from a ship is, I don't know, 10 meters, maybe, maybe even less. And this is the um, related the dis dispersion uh, modeling. Then civil eating, biomass burning is mainly in the cities. Uh, we are talking about five municipalities very close uh, one each other and mainly coming from the area in, in the mountain. Hey, here, look at the value. 10 plus something, so the contribution of PM coming from biomass is much more higher than the one coming from industry. And finally, urban traffic, NOx emission, they are following the main street that we have in the area, of course, because we are talking about cars. And look again at the value. But all these pollutants are going in the air, affecting the quality of air, and probably, but we know, the end affecting the health status of residents. Then we perform, okay, that was done. Now let's do the biomonitoring study. So how to sample who is going to be biomonitored by us? The sample can be representative of the general population. This is the ve a very crucial point. The, the selection of the sample, the prefaces, because if you are wrong in the selection, if you 
may maybe um, ask people only here on only here maybe when you put the dispersion modeling results up to a map of the JIS method you cannot find anything maybe there is something very bad going in that area but as you fail to select your sample you you are not going to see results if they they, ha they, they are, or you are going to see results that are not false because they are not represented from the population. So what he did is, okay, let's say that everybody in the area are at risk to be sampled. So we ask the municipality, please provide us with your file with all the addresses of the people at a certain point. Remember that biomonitoring reflect recent exposure, so let's say six months, one year. So please, the measure of the, my city, give me the data of, of the residents. They are anonymous, just an address, so we don't need any private information. And we put all the address in the map, and as you can uh, imagine, uh, where the city are, cities are, the dots are more crowdy, and here we have a rural area, a lot of rural or empty spaces. So we had at the beginning uh, 71,000 more people, uh, aged uh, just adults, because for some problems it's not good to ask children to provide blood, uh, so better to avoid them unless it's, unless it's really extremely necessary. And so we ask adult, and uh, we uh, our period was uh, to, uh, a couple of three years ago, and so we sample just by chance, randomly selected. Randomization guarantees the representatives because we have no a priori, a priori a prothesis. We put the data in a software, and we just simply ask another software, please select us. 2,000 people, and that's what we said. And we start the biomonitoring following a very strict, strict protocol uh, of inclusion. They, they were very well informed at the beginning for the objective of the study. They have to sign the letter, um, the, I want to be in the study or not, someone refused, and we just asked urine and some blood. And we also start build a biobank because it's all, if you have money in the future, if you have money, please do this, the biomonitoring study, but also please put some frozen uh, specimen in the fridge because you never know, maybe in a few uh, years, uh, you can still say something about the population. Maybe new techniques are coming, and you already have the samples, the frozen samples. So this, those are the results uh, of our people. We started from 2000, but at the end, uh, we just had uh, half, 1,141 uh, availability of people. They, 600 of them refused. They refused for several reasons, and we asked them why, because we, it was a telephone, uh, why they refuse. Because it's important also to, okay, to go on with people in the study, but also say, describe why they are not, the, for people who are not going to participate, because what if the not uh, people, people not attending our study are really residents in area where the concentration is very high. We are missing part of the exposure people. So we cannot do anything to force them, but at least it's good to describe. And we were lucky because there were no differences in exposure um, between people in the sample and people outside the sample. No difference be between sex, same percentage male, females in the people sampled and the people that, that refused, same percentage of age distribution. It was by chance, because you cannot say anything about the, the refusals. They have the right not to be in the study, but we are lucky. So we collect blood, urine, nails, and hair, because uh, our biomarkers were mainly metals. How to decide what I'm going to measure in biomonitoring study? You have to choose elements related to the exposure. Otherwise, there is no sense 
and how you can say that the elements are related to the exposure by the literature, by studying the, uh, the, the topic. So we collect uh, uh, less than, uh, more than 15, less than 20 heavy metals. Uh, also, we collect uh, some benzene uh, metabolic, cotinin, because of the, the smoke, because sometimes they say, I don't smoke anymore, but you find very high level of cotinin in, in, in their urine. And also, um, pH, we also measure that. I just now want to discuss, I'm almost finished, eh? uh, about the, the metals. But for example, cadmium, lead, and nickel, they are the, their toxic, toxicity is well known. We know that they can damage. They are related to coal combustion, to, uh, to smoking, to combustion in general, to harbor. And why we can say that? Because there are a lot of studies, uh, maybe in USA or in Europe, uh, that we use to say that. Uh, those are results. The other uh, thing that you have to do when you perform uh, your biomonitoring study is to compare. In the first line, I'm sorry, is, uh, is in Italian, maybe it's Latin names more or less is similar to English, but let's say the second row is arsenic, because we have also, this, uh, that is also a volcanic area, so probably arsenic is in the water that they drink because of the natural situation. They, they have filtered in the uh, water distribution system, but still some uh, higher level of arsenic has been proved, but also arsenic comes from combustion. And we found, that, for example, in the second row, a level of 19, uh, micro, uh, 19 um, microgram by gram of creatinine in the urine of people. How much is it? 20. Is mm, a lot? Uh, no, it's a reasonable value. So we, first, we compare our results with other situation in Italy. There are not a lot of biomonitoring studies. So what you have, you use. And we have uh, Turin, which is an industrial city in the north of Italy where the major uh, Fiat, the major uh, car industry uh, that we have in Italy is located, and also incinerator, and also traffic, and also other, and a general mean coming from all, uh, all other, a mean of biomodern study. So we say, hmm, we are observing almost 20, in small cities, but a very big industrial city in Italy has 16, so less. Mm, so maybe something is going up here because our industry is not so big as the, the industry in Turin. And then the, you, this is our results. Those are local comparison with Italian standard. Then we went to the NENES, which is a very big survey conducted in America. I don't know how many people of person are in. And they found in this USA survey a medium level of arsenic of eight. So we have double the, the, the dimension. So double, double, it, it means something. So we, when you have the results, find a comparison. I didn't care that the comparison comes from America. That was the, the, the biggest that, that, that is published in, le in literature. So we can say that in Civita Vecchia, in our, our, our population, for example, are suffering very high level of ar arsenic. Uh, then this is the, now I, I'm sorry, this is my field, but I don't have time to, uh, to explain how it was possible to say that, but we simply compare through a regression analysis the uh, concentrations at individual level, just to explain. Now, for each individual, we have their own biomonitor level, let's say, of arsenic, because we have measured it, so we know Carla has his own level. Then we have the uh, at Carla's address, the level of contamination coming from dispersion modelings, the related, we have four columns, four, um, four values, one from the industry, the thermoelectric plant, one from the arbor, one from pollutants coming for traffic, and one for pollutants coming from uh, civil eating. So for each person, we have five value, the biomonitoring, and the four concentration coming from the, the, the dispersion module. So simply put it in the relation, we found something, now it's complicated to explain the graph, so I 
put it in, uh, in, uh, in words, we found some relation, significant, statistically significant emission between coal combustion and some heavy metals that a priori we know uh, has been already associated with that exposure, and same for traffic, for coming both for Rome and from ships. And in, for these, not for all, only, but for these elements, we found that dispersion modeling are good enough to estimate the concentration. So, why performing a, a, a costly biomonitoring study if you can have the dispersion modeling? We are going to publish this so it can be you know, something that can be used as a reference in future, in future work, but sometimes if you don't have this is one, there are few experiences like that, but it's one of the studies that says that maybe can be valuable use dispersion model instead of biomonitoring. That's it in time. Uh, ready to answer question if any, now or at the coffee level? Oh. <laughs> no, no. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Carla, for your presentation. I want to find out, those who participated, did, uh, I mean, did they get uh, compensation, like money, like, uh, that, that, okay. because sometimes this one also is yeah, costly, we, I mean. Yeah. Okay, we off, I mean, I had uh, some experience in several surveys. Sometimes we use uh, a small uh, um, ticket that you can use to go to a supermarket and buy something. Uh, but in this case, we offer the full uh, bloody evaluation test results. So they can have, you know, the, cl the um, uh, clinical, so you have, uh, you know, cholesterol, triglyceride, the thyroid hormones, everything. So we, are, you, we offered them the screening and they were very happy because we are under crisis and uh, it was a good uh, daily. For free, it's very dif difficult. Thank you, Carla, for the nice presentation. I have just one question. Uh, you say that you related those metals to the um, emission from the coal power plant for, from lit literature studies. Uh, therefore, you don't have the fingerprint of that specific power plant. So you don't know exactly if tellium, for example, derives really from the power plant because you have, I don't know, maybe sample okay, from the no, stack. Oh, oh, the, the, reality, the reality is that we have all the, um, at the chimney, the, uh, the uh, environmental agency checked for some of the components, the one that have to be, they are under regulation. So because they have to stay in below the limits, we have all, the, all this out. So it's not for sure, but for the main, we can say yes, because they are also emitted. The front. And we have the value, because we have the authorized value. I mean, in Italy, if you want to create your own industry, you have to provide data about the emissions, at least the authorized. I mean, you say that you are not going to emit more than tot. Uh, thank you for the uh, presentation, but just, I have uh, just a question. You mentioned that you are using uh, coal for power plant for electricity generation, and also you have a cement plant. And the simulation that result uh, about the particulate metal concentration is less than the um, a recommended level it is Boeing O3 something and Boeing O17. And in the last uh, slide, you mentioned that you have a very, to some extent, a very uh, high concentration of toxic element. So, in I'll this case, how I can re uh, believe on the modeling? Yeah, first you have you said you have a low concentration of particulate matter, but at the end you mentioned that we have very toxic element deposited here. That's, they, okay, so people don't know exactly. I mean, I was the, um, I'm not living in that area, and there was the sample, sample number one, because I say, let's test on me, 
and I found on myself very high concentrations of uh, some metals, uh, and I'm not living in an industrial area. So my opinion is the traffic coming from cars, because I live in the center of Rome, is probably the most uh, important uh, uh, killer here. Also considering the concentration level at that moment. We control for everything, eh, for uh, having had, uh, I don't know, a barbecue the day before, because we had a lot of questionnaires to guarantee that about the food, have you have, because we have mercury and arsenic, have you eaten fish for in the last, uh, in the few days before the collection of urine? So people, they don't know exactly the, I mean, we let them know, but there is no appeal against the level of arsenic in your body. So it's an issue. What, 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 and we don't know about the individual toxicity. What will be, me, I have, I, I know that I have a lot of uh, um, precious metals as such as gold, you can sell me uh, in, in the market, coming from the catalytic uh, marmite, help me Maurizio. The, okay, the, from the emission of the cards, and, uh, but I don't know how to cope with that. I simply have, uh, and it's not uh, also the level of lead uh, or other very serious, high to tox toxic materials, they have in their blood, so we say them, as you have those results, please go frequently to your physician and check your health status and try to have an healthy style of life. That's what, because there is not appeal against this. They, they, some of them are in the fat tissue, so you are not going to excrete them very easily. So go to the, check your status. They are healthy individual because they are aged 35 to 60, so uh, adults, and uh, check your health status, I mean, uh, free in the, with the, uh, as much as you can. Okay, uh, thank you, Carla. I have two questions. Uh, the first one, maybe I miss your presentation. Is it necessary in, in your case, also maybe in my case later, uh, we should take the control the control of the respondent outside of the industrial, in, in, in your case, in, in that side? Should uh, we take outside no, of the... No, the question, what is the question? Uh, is the control, necessary? I mean, so you have, you can compare between the contaminated industrial and with non-contaminated yeah. area. Is it necessary for us to take uh, some control sample? In this, okay, is it important when you want to assess an effect? Mm -hmm. Now it is just for exposure, but the objective of the study was to uh, decide whether to use biomonitoring or dispersion modeling. So I'm not really interested in the result of the dispersion modeling or in the results of the biomonitoring on the health of the person. So I don't really care. What I would like to know uh, in, in my it, 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 hypothesis was to detect at the residential address of each participant of the study if the concentration estimation estimated from the dispersion models okay. and the, le I mean, the question is, if I have high level of uh, uh, arsenic, uh, the, which is for me the, the tracer of the industry, and also the concentration uh, estimated from the industry by the dispersion model are high and high, my, I can say, okay, I can, I can use, but if they go, in the opposite direction, something is wrong. So then who, who we have to choose? And the gold standard is the biomonitor. Maybe the dispersion model is not good for that. So in this case, it's not a comparison of exposed or non-exposed. It's just at the residential address, if they go, both go to the same direction, up or down, or, or in the opposite direction. I, I hope I, I haven't spread I, I can. Maybe let's say it a bit later. Yeah. Thank you, Carla, for the presentation. I have three questions. The first one is about the, uh, the samples. Uh, uh, did you collect samples uh, uh, once or many times? Project. You mean for the biomonitoring? Yes. Not just once. It's extremely, um, you need a lot of money because the measurements are 20 um, metals plus the metabolite of benzene and the pH was, it cost uh, around uh, 
maybe three or four hundred for each subject, we have two thousand, so no, it was a problem. But uh, our, if we found other money, I would like to repeat, because it's a spot just once, in but, this case. But uh, the, 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 the ideal, the ideal uh, samples would be three times, I think. Yeah, for, but for how many people you had? Some 15, 15. 15. Yeah. I had 1,100. Ah, so, <laughs> so just a remark. Have you paid any, anything for the, those people? Huh? Have you paid anything for those people? I paid what? Yes, I paid. I mean, not me. The, the, the local authorities that, that decided to put money on this because the arbor was really a crucial aspect in uh, their environment. This was my second question. How did you, did you uh, do for convince the authority to, to collaborate with you? It was a governmental program or just a research project? Uh, no, it was, um, it's very difficult. I mean, it's, uh, they, they don't want to put money, never. Uh, but the, for some reason, they had some extra money. You know, when you close your, your pl budget plan and you find uh, that you have uh, still some money to invest uh, in something, <laughs> and you decide that maybe, I'll, but we ask it for. As we have been asked, okay, we should do done something, we should do done something. Should do that. After a few years, they say, okay, now we can probably do something because we have found the money. But it's just public money, no industry money, never perform studies. Uh, uh, okay, you can do that if uh, you don't have any other, but it's better to find independent money if you want to say something about the relation between the industry and the health. My last question is about the, the assumptions that you have uh, chosen for this, this, this patient model. You have chosen that uh, PM10 as a tracer for uh, biomethane, uh, biomass, bio, biomass burning. I thought, in, for, for example, in European countries, the, the average of uh, um, the, the black carbon as used as tracer for biomethane burning and mostly is uh, constructed in PM25, not in PM10. Maybe is, you use PM25 as tracer for BMT. Yeah, but as we, are, we have in mind to do the epidemiological study, we choose a tracer that we have the sponsor response, exposure response function available. So we have for PM and not for black carbon, you are right. But the epidemiological study provided at now, I mean at this moment, I don't know in the future, provide uh, consolidated evidence concerning PM. So we choose PM. Also because we don't really need a tracer is a tracer. Also, if it's another one, it can be different, but the dispersion can be more or less that one. So just we want to characterize the, the, the area in level, different level. We are not really interested in the amount of concentration, the specific points, because what we need was a spatial distribution of the phenomenon. We, no, sorry, because we're really running out of time. No, but so I'm, got, I'm available. Uh, the the coffee. Coffee. We've got the last question from internet, so this one I've got to ask you because you've got to answer so many. Just very simple um, questions. So someone is waiting for you. She's been waiting for ten yeah. minutes for the question. Someone so, and then him and then coffee. Uh, she said, as you concluded, the dispersion model can be replaced by HBM, but in dispersion model, just PM was modeled. Isn't it needed to model the dispersion of each heavy metal and toxic material individually? I am I'm already response now at the, at the question. Sorry, someone. That was exactly the, the question we, we answer now. So, okay. Uh, thank you for your interesting presentation. Uh, just I have very two simple questions. Uh, I think you said depends on your results of the model. Uh, the limitation of pollutant is under the permission. Yes, extremely under. Yes, but, but I think you have four point source in the same area. I think you should collect for this four point source together because it's in the same area. Excellent. Because if, what if, we have done in epidemiological study, yes, we call if, it uh, PM coming from industry independently of the source, and there's no time, for, but I can show you maybe the, the slides, we already did it, because you are, uh, that's the point, point. Yeah, and that's yeah. what we did. We collected some, simply some, it's a sum, because you know, so we had each address the PM coming from industry, independent on the soil, which was 40 plus uh, something, because the contribution specific on the industry and the arbor were 0 0.0000, so what? Okay, the second, is this model is kind of blue model 
or buff model? Uh, buff. Buff model? Thank you. Sorry. Okay, uh, just to remind you, yesterday, yes, you, you, we had, you, you know this little game I told you about when we had this uh, round table? So there's a question on the blackboard, post it if you want to uh, answer the question which is asked, what is the action you, uh, you want to commit to doing when coming back to your country for bringing better hair, better, uh, better hair to your fellow citizens. Back at uh, 11, uh, yes, 11.